One day and one night at sea, after we left Ajaccio and Corsica, we spot the islands outside the French mainland, somewhere between Saint-Tropez and Toulon, just as the early morning lights start to illuminate our tiny little speck of existence. The colors of the rising sun over the glassy water is truly something that's burnt into my memories forever. Last time on She Rules the Waves, we sailed north along Corsica to Ajaccio, enjoyed the fruits of the city, before departing on our next passage towards the French mainland. This time we enjoy our last morning at sea, before entering Port Saint Louis, say goodbye to the crew and try to figure out what to do next. We're so grateful that you choose to follow our journey, and promise even more stories if you follow our other platforms, and most important of all, subscribe! It's certainly not every day I get to see the mesmerizing spectacle that is the sunrise. I'm more of a night person, actually. Although, a few times up north, it's not uncommon that I stay up late enough to experience it. But it's usually nothing like this show. And although there's no wind right now, we do have a coming Mistral and would really like to get into the calms of Port Saint Louis before that hits. After a really calm night, we start the day just south of the islands outside France and we start to head west along the coast, past Marseille, to the mouth of the river Rhone. The plan is to get the sails down, demast, and head north into the depths of Europe on the inland waterways. Outside Marseille, we pass by the magnificent lighthouse of Planier. With its 66 meters or 216 feet, it's the 12th highest traditional lighthouse, whatever that means, in the world. I really hope I get to sail by the 11 higher ones someday. That's the goal. And then we try to spot the old prison slash fort Chateau d'If, where the Count of Monte Cristo took place. You might not see it, but it's there. We do have to pass through some immense tanker anchorages and oil refineries before entering the long canal that leads up to the marina. The wind is rising now, but we made it. <laughs> Although the music on the town square wasn't mm, great, we did thoroughly enjoy our food and our drinks. And then, a good night's sleep in the calm of the marina. That can't be right. <laughs> what language is that? Being brought up with the language of dotted A's and O's, I'd really like to know what these languages are. So please let us know in the comments. Yep, there it is. The phone. And after our classic 12 minute sightseeing, it was time to get to work.
over there, behind the bridge, is where the first lock is located. And let's just say I'm not worried about the length of Sedna to get in there. This is the last night together as a crew, because tomorrow my parents and Tosa manage to get flights to get back home to their regular lives. And what better way to end this part of the journey than with the sunset over the river. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there was a hell of a lot going on here behind the scenes that I didn't have the presence to record at the time. You see, uh, the original plan was to go up the river, Rhone, and then all the way through the European inland waterways. And then um, finally ending up in the Baltic and go all the way back home. Unfortunately, that's not at all what happened. Let me explain. First problem, I have no crew. After Tossa and my parents leave, there is no one to take their places. For different reasons, like scheduling problems after my extended stay in Marina de Rochella, as well as airline strikes, making the flights rare and way more expensive than usual. Second problem, there is not enough water in the canals. Yes, you heard me right. The heatwave and the lack of rain all over Europe has all but dried out a lot of the waterways. During our days here in Port saint louis de rhone I've heard countless stories about boats with way shallower drafts than Sedna being stuck all over the place. Like my fellow YouTuber from Sweden, Let's Go Sailing Tilda. I have been so much looking forward to go all the way to Med and uh, I got reached by the, the news this afternoon that the French canals are already closed. So at this point, I have to figure out my options. One plan is to keep preparing the boat and go up to the first city north along the Rhone River and winter there. But doing so solo, with locks, isn't my first choice. Another plan is to keep sailing towards Spain and take the long way around. Except for the boat eating orcas along the Atlantic coast, my very limited time slot, and of course the lack of crew, again, probably rules this out too. Third plan is to just leave the boat here for the winter and go home. Vacation at home with the boys in the rest of the summer and get back to the canals in the springtime, when the water is hopefully back to normal levels. And if the winter is dry, I guess I can always start the long way around that instead. In the moment this really felt like a failure, but now that I put my mind in problem solve mode again, I'm kind of happy with the decision. Plan number three, it is. Time to bike again towards Port Navy service to figure out the next step. And look who's back. So, here I am once again on my way to Port Navy service, the yard where I looked at two boats on the same trip that I found Sedna. Let's hope they'll have a spot for me. And how will I manage to get there on my own? Well, you'll find out more about that next week. And in the meantime, please check out our Patreon page for exclusive materials, our website and our social media for real-time updates. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button and the little bell. And until next time, take care. <laughs>